and for those of you who are just joining us on Facebook Live, I'm Lindsay Holmes. I'm the Deputy Healthy Living Editor at the Huffington Post. Here in Hollywood, we just watched the premiere of Beyond Silence, a documentary by Be Vocal, Speak Up for Mental Health. It showcases the lives of people who learned how to live well with mental health condition and speak up about it. I'm here with the cast, Jeff Fink and Earl, <laughs> Lauren Burke, Floyd Hale, the executive producer, Jemmy Lovato, and the director, Shaul Schwartz. You can watch the film for yourself at bevocalspeakup.com. We're gonna have a panel discussion about the film and what mental health means to each of them. So if you guys are ready to get started, I'll ask my first question. Shaul, it's for you. What do you want people to take away from this film? I think I wanted people to understand just how special these three people are. It's uh... Yeah, round of applause for <laughs> It's, it's encouraging. You, you, you meet people and you understand that they're first, and to borrow Lloyd's sentence from the film, we're all kind of alike. And you forget that when there's stigma around. You forget just how, and I've lived with this, it's something that's been close to my heart. And so when I was, when this opportunity kind of landed, I was psyched. And I think Demi kind of paved the way for people to talk about this. And I think there's issues that cross borders of politics, that cross all, just bring us together, but we need to work on it. It's not over. It's not something that we've changed. This is a generation that's going to change it, and the torch kind of gets passed through. And if this film saves one life, helps one person, then I'm so privileged because I got to do this. Absolutely. So. I'd love to ask all of you this question, actually. Demi, what do you want people to take away from this film? What I want people to take away from this film is that there's, it's so important to create conversation so that we take away the stigma from mental illness. Um, it is possible to live well with a mental health condition and thrive in your life with a mental health condition. I, you know, I work out myself every single day and the people sitting here who were so courageous to share their stories um, they work on it as well, and they're perfect examples that you can that you can still be happy and and live a fulfilling life with a mental health condition. Absolutely, Lloyd. What do you want people to take away from this film? Well, I think I want people to take away that anything that prior to any type of diagnosis, I think it's just time to get rid of all of the garbage that we've been told about mental health disorders or mental illness. Get rid of all of that garbage and start digging for the facts for ourselves, starting to get to know people um, and, and, and less outcasting people and more um, surrounding ourselves with factual information about mental health disorders versus the myths and all of that ugly stuff that's out there. Definitely. Warren? Yeah, all of the above. Um, also, for me, it's about uh, breaking the idea of perfection. And when we allow ourselves to be imperfect, we allow ourselves to start getting help. And so if, if I can show people that nobody is perfect and nobody is living this wonderful, perfect life that's shown on Instagram or in social media, um, and that it's those imperfections that make us wonderful and make us human and deserve help, then that's what it is for me. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Jeff? Um, I want people to know that they're not alone and that's the, the biggest thing that I think that I want them to take away is, is you're not alone. And even if you have something a little different from someone else, if you speak out, if you talk to people, if you reach for help, you'll find there's a whole new world out there. There's a lot of support, a lot of people that understand you. And through that support, there comes healing. And of course, I want them to take away that animals can be a, a huge role in that as well. So. <laughs> Demi, um, being an executive producer is a new role for you. What made you want to get involved with this project? Any time that I can get involved in something where it's going to raise the awareness of mental health in America, um, I want to be a part of. And so I've been working with Be Vocal for quite a while now, a couple years. And when we were talking about the documentary, I knew it was something that I definitely wanted to be a part of. It's kind of a no-brainer for me. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Lloyd, um, it's clear in the film, everyone should go watch it and see it, it's clear in the film that your family is a huge motivating factor for you and you want to be a positive influence in their life. Um, how do you talk about mental health with your kids? That's an interesting question. Um, you know, uh, a friend of mine, Michelle, she says uh, that our children often raise us. <laughs> and and, and that I, I get a lot of that, especially from Carrington, who you saw in the film. You know, sometimes, let's say if I'm taking too long to get out of the house or something, then she'll say, Daddy, you need to put your shoes on. And then she'll say, well, if you don't put your shoes on, you're not going to get a snack, you know? <laughs> and, and it's, but it's one of those things because I do that to her, right? So if she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing, I'm, I'm trying to motivate her to do it. But what I realize is she's actually mimicking what I'm, what I'm doing. So she's actually taking on the same role. So I think it's first important for me to um, role model it, you know, to, to role model the healthy boundaries, to role model the goal setting and sticking to my guns, being truthful, um, to role model the honesty, um, gratitude. And in doing that, I think that the best thing I'm doing is just providing tools for them. We cannot, we can't um, avoid any type of mental illness or anything like that. Um, but if, if we have the right tools and the right foundation, I think that uh, we can navigate it uh, a little better. So um, I think in a nutshell, that's what I do. I'm more, I practice healthy living skills um, with my family. And yeah, first and foremost, my demonstration. Yeah, absolutely. Lauren, you describe in the film that your diagnosis was like a key being unlocked. Can you talk to us a little bit more about that feeling and how it led to your overall wellness? Sure. I, I think I had spent a lot of my life beating myself up, both physically when I was in a period of self-harm, um, but also emotionally, that I didn't feel like I was able to deal with things as easily as other people were. Um, my first long period of depression was after I had spent a summer working on HIV and AIDS research in China. Um, and after law school, I was working with trafficked children. So I was sort of able to just say, well, I'm just doing hard things in life, and so that's why I'm sad. But then I would look around and other people didn't have panic attacks in the, in the middle of the night. Other people didn't you know, hurt themselves when they were having an emotional response. And so when I got the bipolar diagnosis, not only did it allow me to sort of forgive myself because it, it, it made sense, um, but it also, you know, when I looked back on my childhood and a lot of things from being too hyper to be invited to kids' birthday parties um, to having these really crazy moments where I could pull all-nighters, which was great. Thanks, Bipolar, for that. <laughs> um, you know, it, it just, looking back, I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. Yeah, absolutely. Jeff, um, for the, those of you who can see in the front, Earl here with you also. Um, he was a key part in your wellness. What advice do you have for people who want to add a pet to their wellness routine? Uh, the first piece of advice, or more what I would say is, that's awesome because you're looking at, you're looking at out of the box options. You're, you're realizing that there are a lot of different treatments out there and there's no one size fits all. And just like there's no one size fits all for a, a specific dog or a cat or a guinea pig or a bird or really whatever animal might be the best to help introduce someone to that human animal connection that can really, uh, can really save lives. So I would say if, if there's one thing to keep in mind, it's to take it slow. There's not a race. Don't go grab the first dog you fall in love with at a shelter or the first you know, breeder that presents that perfect puppy for you. That you know, Take your time. Get a, what I call an animal wellness team in place and, and uh, work with your, your therapist, work with your doctors, with your friends, peer support, and really figure out the best type of dog for you. For some, it's not going to be an 80-pound golden retriever that has made my entire outfit probably covered in hair. I mean, it's, for some, they, they're, they're allergic and, and other things. So really just, just take your time, and, and it, can, it can really change lives. Definitely. Demi, um, you mentioned earlier that you've been involved with Be Vocal for a number of years, and you're a seasoned mental health advocate. Um, obviously, not everyone can be in a documentary like this to speak up about mental health, but can you tell me some other ways that people at home can speak up or be advocates for mental health themselves? Absolutely. You can actually go to BeVocalSpeakUp.com where you can find the documentary, um, but you can go to the website and you can find out ways that you can be vocal for yourself, but also be vocal for your community, whether it's going to Capitol Hill um, and pushing for comprehensive mental health legislation, or if it's writing letters to congressmen, um, or if it's being supportive of your friends or family who have 
a mental health condition. It's it's so many you can you can you have to make sure that you take care of yourself first though. It's almost like when you get on an airplane and they say put your mask on before helping others. You have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself before you put yourself out there and become an advocate. So, um, but you can find ways on BeVocalSpeakUp.com. Great. Um, I have a question actually for all of you now. Um, can you tell me in your own words what Beyond Silence means to you? Jeff, you wanna start? I guess I'll, I'll start there. Yeah. Uh, that's good that I get to start this one because I had to go last on the other one. So that's <laughs> uh, this is this is beyond silence. I'm up here next to you know Demi, Shaul, and you know uh, everyone at the Huffington Post Live, and it's I'm out there sharing sharing my story, and people are opening up. Whether it's in a, in a grocery store line at the movie theaters, people will start talking to me and sharing about their about their mental health struggles or their struggles with addiction. And that is you know, beyond silence. That's getting people to come out and realize it's okay to talk, get help, and recovery is possible. Lauren? Yeah. That, was, <laughs> yeah, that, that was so beautiful. I, I, I mean, it's also just you know continuing the thread of speaking up and uncovering our imperfections, um, speaking up about, you know, having a hard day speaking up about the help that you need speaking up about the struggles that you have because the more that we can understand one another i think the better we're going to do as a society and that understanding is really necessary but nobody can understand you if they don't understand what you're going through absolutely lloyd how about you uh that's a big question um I, I, you know i i've experienced 22 months in the hospital and um during that stay in the hospital, there is so much talk about what you can't say, and who you can't talk to, who you can't reach out to, what you can't say to your doctor, you, you know what I mean? And uh, to, to finally get to a place where um, it is expected for me to speak up um, is just wonderful. Um, to go beyond that idea that I have to just do what anyone says, and I can ask questions, and I can give feedback, I could monitor myself and, and provide feedback to my, my treatment team and become a partner um, with what happens to me next. It's, it's just awesome. So I'm um, just going beyond that idea that we don't have a voice is just amazing. That's great. Demi? Everything that they've said. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, I think that it beyond silence means creating conversation, whether it's for yourself or others. There's many people out there that don't have the courage yet to speak up for themselves or tell people what they need. And by creating the conversation and taking away the stigma, you're able to help those who can't do that for themselves yet. So um, Beyond Silence is creating conversation for me. Great. Shaul? I mean, meeting these people made me understand that you could have mental health and do anything. It takes work. It takes going beyond that silence. But these guys are capable of anything. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Um, I think that's something that wasn't a given to me going into this. And I'm new to this. You, you guys live through this and know this well. And to me, that was really rewarding to see that you could dream big and feel big. And yet, you have hard days. You, you look in, you say, well, today I take care of myself first. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is, is you need to speak out to get to that point. Um, and that's, that's kind of unique to me. That was really empowering to learn from them. Yeah, absolutely. Self-care is so important and focusing on yourself, especially when you're not feeling healthy, is obviously very, very crucial. Um, we have some questions from the audience for you guys. Um, I guess this, is, this could be for anyone, um, but, so feel free to jump in. Uh, what's your hope for the future of mental health in America? What do you want to see change? 
I want to see more therapists and psychiatrists covered by mental health insurance. That's a huge, huge issue, um, is being able to find people who are in network. Um, and finding a therapist, it's like dating. You've got to try a bunch, you know? I wish there was a Tinder for it, swipe right, swipe left. Um, that would be great, but it is. And it's, and it's hard to find those that are, I'm in New York City, and there was still, with my insurance, there were only a, two or three people that were covered. So I have the privilege to be able to pay out of pocket. Um, but I want to see that expanded greatly. Um, can I elaborate on that for, with you for a little bit? Sure. What do you think is important for people to look for in mental health help, especially therapy? What, what kind of signs or what, what's something that they should notice when they first go into a therapy session? For me, it needs to be a partnership. You need to feel like you're really on equal level with your therapist and that they're a part of your team and not just telling you what to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's huge. Um, any of you, um, what's one hope that you have for the future of mental health? Floyd, do you have something? Well, I, I just hope that, I hope that for the future of mental health that we can see that each of us have our thing. Um, you know, for Jeff, it's um, the support of, uh, of, of Earl. Um, for me, it's a bicycle. Um, you know, so, for, but, and it's going to be so many other different mm -hmm. things for other folks. It may be writing, it may be um, talking and communicating. It may be having a healthy discussion. It may, it may be so many things. And for us to not rule out the possibilities of what that thing can be. And sometimes it may be that thing that we're avoiding. It may be that thing that may be a little tense for us to get involved with. But for us to be able to um, uh, um, reach beyond what is, uh, what is uh, visible, so to speak, to find that thing that clicks, helps us click and helps us find purpose even. My hope for mental health is that the generations to come will feel like mental health is just something that's, that mental health is as important as physical health. Mm -hmm. And maybe that comes from conversation and taking the stigma away from it, or maybe it's being educated in school along with phys physical ed education. Yeah, that's actually a really great point. <laughs> a plea to all gym teachers out there. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly throw yeah. in my head yeah, because I have do. two hopes. Um, certainly, I think, as Demi's saying, education and uh, you know, more awareness and also a collaboration uh, among, among treating providers and those that are peer support specialist movement and life coaches and just a, a greater uh, team effort because I think that's what's needed to really help create that individualized path uh, for each person and also offering variety of, of services where we've looked in the past where it's been medication and therapy and and those definitely have great roles but providing lots of other services and certainly affordable services yeah. as well yeah, definitely. Um, our next question from the audience uh, what practical advice do you have for someone who is in their darkest moment uh, I guess I'll yeah you want to take that one? I can start with yeah um, Never give up. Never, never give up. It's uh, life can change, and it and it will. It, it has for me. That doesn't mean that I don't feel anxiety or I haven't had anxiety around this project and sitting up here. But you know, I'm here to to show others that you know there there's definitely you know hope out there, and and not to say you've got to be. Uh, depressed and, and have this optimistic great outlook on life but just get through get through life and get through each day and, and one day things will change and who knows you might be sitting up here with a dog you know that's <laughs> <laughs> um, for me it's two two practical advice one is Calvin and Hobbes I feel like Calvin and Hobbes can solve anything I always have that by my bed um, but for me darkest moments are about me really feeling I'm a horrible person so anytime I get a nice note or a letter from somebody I put it in a box and I go through that box of notes whenever I'm in a really dark place. That's great. Lloyd, how about you? Um, I, I think Jeff hit it on the head, don't give up. And I, I heard a, a speaker, I can't I remember his name, but a presenter once said, and he broke it down. I heard this all my life, but he slowed it down for me. And he said, um, hard times don't come to stay, they come to pass. Mm -hmm. um, and an and, and offshoot from that for me is that there's a tunnel at the end of the light, um, and there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So we, in our lives, we're going to constantly cycle in and out of good and bad times. Our goal is to just hold on to as much of that light, and that light being skills and support, 
healthy relationships, healthy habits, um, so that when those dark moments return, that we, we have something to, to, to work with. So. Um, I actually have a question, a different question for the two of you. What's next for the film after this? Do you want to answer that? <laughs> sure. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think this was, we were all geared up to launch, and so it took a lot of work and excitement. I think what we would like is to see it go viral, to screen it in as many places as possible. I give Synovian and the team that created this a ton of credit. Um, because I think it was very brave. It's not, uh, it's brave for these guys to come out and it's brave to do such a project. Um, and usually for braveness there is a reward. And I think, again, like to me there's some kind of passing of a torch here that I see as an outsider to these guys. And I think the most important thing as an outsider to mental health is to see people treat it different. When we have diabetes, we say we have it because we're not afraid of a consequence of how we're not going to get a job or someone's going to whisper in the corner. And this film alone can't do it, and none of us, even Demi, can't do it alone. But together, as you start kind of doing these projects, I really believe we can change. We've seen in this country other issues change with generations, and I think that's kind of the hope, the bigger hope, and everything. I think anybody on this stage could do to push the in the right direction is what we want to see with this film. Um, Lauren, you mentioned in the film the importance of kind of getting rid of the facade of perfection that social media creates. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that or give a message to people who may feel like they have to be perfect on social media all the time? Yeah, sure, or just perfect in life all the time. I mean, I. W I I was diagnosed and the day afterwards I started writing the article that later on was published and I had a lot of people sort of discourage me from doing it because at that time I had a staff, it was up to me to raise money for my organization and all of that. Um, but being in a per having that privilege, having that power, um, have, being somebody that people looked up to, it was really important for me to crack that so that other people could see it. And I mean, Demi, I love that you do shoots with no makeup. Like, I love that Alicia Keys is doing that now. I just think it's incredibly important because we have generations now that are being raised in this ideal of perfection, and it's affecting us, and it's affecting everyone. And so the more that we can just show, like, I am real, I am human, and I'm here, I think that that's a way to be vocal also. Well, um, you've directed other things before. I imagine this was a little bit different for you. Can you talk about the process of that and how it compares to other work that you've done? Sure. I guess like this project was special from the get-go when I met Maureen and the B2 team and the participants. Um, they kind of threw this into my lap and usually these are as journalists and filmmakers you come and you kind of crack ideas and here they kind of like said look we we have this message, it's really important, it's really burning. I was like, yeah, I agree, What? tell me more. And they handed off this kind of great research and knowledge and it was, it was really special. You know, we, we shared the film around, which is not a common thing when you're doing a doc. And I, I don't know, I just felt it really unique to me. I kind of met all you and mainly watch you a lot on the screens because uh, you shoot a little bit and you edit forever. Um, <laughs> but it was kind of magical to see in the last couple of days you guys come together and, and I don't know, it's, it's, yeah. it's like every movie has its story of how magically it all works and I feel this one's connecting and just a special project. And Absolutely. Demi, my last question is for you. What um, message do you want people to take away either from this film or from about mental health in general? What I want people to take away is something that I can't stress enough, that mental health is just as important, if not more important, than physical health. Um, actually, mental health is physical health mm -hmm. because Patrick Kennedy told me, he said, you know, the brain is kind of an important organ. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, it's very important. Remember that one in five American adults have a mental health condition. So it's not something that makes you different or weird or something that you should be ashamed about. It's something that you can talk about. And if you're struggling to speak up to those around you, you can be honest with the people around you. 
if you feel like you can't, there's hotlines that you can call. Um, but the most important thing is to create the conversation so that the stigma can be taken away. Definitely. So thank you everyone for joining me. Thank can I get a round of applause for everyone who's here? Yay. Yay. Good job, all. <laughs> thank you all also for joining us on Facebook Live. You can see the documentary at bevocalspeakup.com. I appreciate you for tuning in and I appreciate all of you here. It's been an honor to moderate this panel tonight and speak up for mental health. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.